This Korean backyard trick replaces fertilizer forever. Big Ag doesn't want you to know. If you've been gardening for a while, you already know the struggle. You want rich, fertile soil that feeds your plants naturally, but every time you turn around, there's another bag of synthetic fertilizer being pushed at you. Fertilizer that costs money, depletes the soil in the long run, and keeps you dependent on buying more year after year. But what if I told you there's a centuries-old Korean method that allows you to build living, self-sustaining soil that produces its own fertility season after season? No chemicals, no endless spending, just a natural cycle that keeps your plants thriving. This is the method Big Ag would rather you never learn about because it cuts them completely out of the equation. And the best part, you can start it right in your backyard with just a few simple steps. What we're talking about today is Korean natural farming, specifically the practice of making your own indigenous microorganisms, known as IMO. These are the tiny invisible workers that turn lifeless dirt into living soil. Once you understand how to harness them, you'll never look at fertilizer the same way again. In the next few minutes, I'll show you what this method is, why it works better than store-bought fertilizer, and exactly how you can start applying it to your own raised beds, gardens, and even small farms. Every healthy ecosystem is powered by microorganisms, fungi, bacteria, actinomycetes, and other microscopic life forms that break down organic matter and release nutrients in plant-available forms. When you walk through an old forest, the soil beneath your feet is teeming with these organisms. That's why forest soil is dark, crumbly, and always fertile without anyone ever applying fertilizer. Plants and microorganisms live in a partnership. Plants release sugars through their roots, and microbes respond by bringing them the minerals and nutrients they need to grow. In conventional agriculture, this partnership is broken. Synthetic fertilizers dump nutrients into the soil in raw, chemical form. They bypass the microbial community which eventually dies off because it's no longer needed. Over time, soils become lifeless, compacted, and dependent on constant external input. That's the cycle Big Ag profits from, but gardeners don't have to accept it. Korean natural farming restores the microbial community by reintroducing the very organisms your soil is missing. The heart of the method is capturing and multiplying indigenous microorganisms from your own environment. These are microbes that have already adapted to your climate, soil type, and local conditions. They know how to thrive where you live, which means they'll perform better than any microbes bought in a packet. Once captured, you grow them in a controlled way, then introduce them into your garden to jumpstart the natural soil cycle. The first step is gathering microorganisms from a healthy, natural environment. In Korea, farmers would collect them from forest floors, bamboo groves, or undisturbed mountainsides. You can do the same by finding a patch of rich, undisturbed soil in a nearby forest or woodland. These places are microbial gold mines. The traditional method involves using a box of cooked rice. Freshly steamed rice is placed inside a small wooden or bamboo box, then covered loosely and left on the forest floor for about a week. During this time, microorganisms colonize the rice. You'll see white, fluffy growth spreading across it. That's your living culture. Once collected, these microbes are stabilized with brown sugar, creating what's called IMO2. From here, the culture can be expanded into larger quantities and eventually applied back to your garden soil. Synthetic fertilizer gives your plants a quick shot of nutrients, but it does nothing to build the long-term health of your soil. Microorganisms, on the other hand, unlock nutrients that are already present but unavailable. They break down minerals, organic matter, and even atmospheric nitrogen, making them usable to plants. This means your soil becomes a living bank of fertility, rather than a dead medium that constantly needs more input. Over time, soils treated with IMO become darker, looser, and more biologically active. Water infiltration improves. Nutrient cycling becomes self-sustaining. And because microbes keep disease-causing organisms in check, plants grown in these soils often show greater resistance to pests and disease. The result is stronger, healthier crops without ever opening a bag of fertilizer. 
After capturing microorganisms with the rice method, you'll need to multiply them before applying to your beds. Farmers traditionally use a series of stages called IMO1 through IMO4. For backyard gardeners, you don't need to get too technical, but here's the simplified process. Once your rice has been colonized, you mix it with an equal weight of brown sugar. This preserves the microbes while keeping them active. This mixture can be stored for months. When you're ready to apply, you mix a small amount with water and let it ferment, then apply it directly to your soil or compost pile. Some gardeners mix it with bran, leaf mold, or compost to expand it further before spreading. The idea is to introduce billions of local microbes into your soil all at once, where they immediately begin building structure, breaking down organic matter, and feeding your plants. The best time to apply IMO is when the soil is moist and temperatures are moderate, usually early morning or late afternoon. Over the course of a season you'll notice soil texture improving roots exploring more deeply, and plants showing greener, more vigorous growth without the need for fertilizer. This method isn't just about microorganisms, it's about working with nature rather than against it. Korean natural farming teaches that everything the soil needs is already present, if only we know how to unlock it. Instead of importing inputs, we recycle what's around us. Leaf mold, crop residues, animal manures, and simple ferments. The system creates a closed loop where fertility is generated within the farm or garden itself. It's sustainable, low cost, and deeply effective. The philosophy also stresses observation. Every garden has its own personality. When you start working with IMO, you'll notice changes in the soil, in the smell, in the way plants respond. This connection builds a deeper understanding of your land. And unlike chemical fertilizers, which keep you dependent, natural farming empowers you to become the true manager of your soil's health. The reason you don't see this method promoted in gardening stores is simple. It doesn't make money for fertilizer companies. If every gardener and farmer started producing their own fertility using microbes and natural inputs, the billion-dollar fertilizer industry would collapse. That's why these methods are, you know, rarely discussed in mainstream agriculture even though they've been proven effective for centuries in places like Korea, Japan, and the Philippines. But in the gardening community, word is definitely spreading. And once you try it, you'll totally understand why it's so powerful. The Korean backyard trick of cultivating indigenous microorganisms is honestly more than just a technique. It's really a pathway to independence. It allows you to break free from synthetic fertilizers, restore the natural cycle of your soil, and grow healthier, more resilient plants year after year. With just a little rice, sugar, and patience, you can set in motion a system that keeps feeding your garden forever. So, if you're serious about gardening and you want to take your soil to the next level, this is your chance. Start small, observe the results, and just build from there. Your soil will thank you, your plants will show the difference, and honestly, you'll never look at fertilizers the same way again. If you found this guide valuable, don't forget to subscribe to Soil Engineer on YouTube, where we dive deep into the science and practice of building living soils. Share this video with fellow gardeners, because the more people who learn these techniques, the stronger our gardening community becomes. Let's spread the knowledge that Big Ag doesn't want us to know, and keep building soil that feeds us forever. Top 5 Plants to Revive Dead Soil 2025 Guide If your soil looks lifeless, hard as concrete, and refuses to grow anything beyond a few weeds, you might think the only solution is buying loads of fertilizer or trucking in expensive compost. The truth is, soil can be revived from within. Nature has its own repair crew, plants that specialize in breaking up compacted ground, fixing nutrients, and rebuilding microbial life beneath the surface. These plants don't just survive in poor soil, they actually improve it for everything that follows. This is not just theory, it's a practice that farmers, permaculturists, and home gardeners have been using for decades, and in 2025, with soils around the world under stress from chemical overuse and climate extremes, 
Knowing which plants can bring life back to your garden is more important than ever. In this guide, we'll walk through the top five plants that can transform dead, depleted soil into rich, thriving ground for vegetables, fruits, and flowers. So, let's get straight into it. Few plants can penetrate compacted soil like daikon radish. Sometimes called tillage radish, this root grows long and deep, punching through clay and hardpan layers that most roots just can't touch. When the radish dies back, it leaves behind channels that act like natural pipes for air, water, and microbial life. Daikon radish also brings nutrients from deep in the soil up to the surface layers. The decomposed root matter becomes organic material that feeds earthworms and beneficial fungi. Over time, this turns lifeless dirt into a friable, breathable soil structure that vegetables and fruits really love. The key is to let the plant grow to maturity, then leave it in the soil to decompose naturally instead of pulling it out. Nitrogen is often the first nutrient to disappear in overworked soil. Without it, plants struggle to put on leafy growth, and soil organisms slow down. Clover, especially red and white clover, is one of the best living tools for restoring nitrogen. So, clover is a legume, which means it partners with rhizobium bacteria in its roots to capture nitrogen directly from the air and store it in the soil. Plus, clover spreads into a soft green carpet that protects bare soil from erosion and sun baking. Its fine roots really help improve soil tilth and prevent crusting on the surface. After a season of clover, you can either mow it down and let it mulch in place, or turn it lightly into the soil to release its nitrogen. Honestly, it's a low-maintenance, high-return plant that every gardener should use when reviving worn-out soil. Alfalfa isn't just for livestock. Gardeners who want to wake up tired soil use alfalfa because of its deep, powerful root system. These roots stretch down several feet, pulling up trace minerals like calcium, magnesium, iron, and phosphorus that shallow-rooted plants can't access. When alfalfa is cut or allowed to die back, those minerals cycle into the topsoil, making them available for your crops. Another advantage is the organic matter alfalfa contributes. Each time you cut it down, it adds a fresh layer of biomass that improves soil texture and feeds soil microbes. Alfalfa tea made by soaking cuttings in water is also a natural growth booster that gardeners can apply as a liquid fertilizer. Planting alfalfa in a neglected patch for even one season can dramatically change soil fertility and structure. Comfrey is sometimes called a dynamic accumulator because of its extraordinary ability to draw nutrients from deep soil reserves. Its taproots can reach down six feet or more, gathering potassium, calcium, and other minerals that most plants can't access. This is why comfrey leaves are so nutrient-rich, they act like a living fertilizer factory. By cutting comfrey several times a season and laying the leaves on the soil as mulch, you're creating a self-renewing compost system right in your garden. The leaves break down quickly, releasing nutrients that restore vitality to dead soil. Comfrey also builds humus, improves soil moisture retention, and attracts pollinators when it blooms. It's one of the most versatile plants for regenerating poor soil and supporting long-term fertility. When you need results quickly, buckwheat is the plant to turn to. This fast-growing cover crop can turn bare, lifeless dirt into living ground in just a few weeks. Buckwheat is particularly good at making phosphorus available in the soil, a nutrient essential for strong root and flower development. Many soils that appear dead actually have locked up phosphorus, and buckwheat unlocks it. Buckwheat also shades out weeds, prevents erosion, and provides masses of organic matter when it's cut down. Its roots loosen the topsoil while its flowers attract beneficial insects like bees and hoverflies. Even a short buckwheat planting between main crops can spark new life in soil that otherwise struggles to recover. While each of these plants can revive soil on its own, their real power comes when used in rotation or combination. A season of daikon radish to break compaction, followed by clover to fix nitrogen, then buckwheat to free up phosphorus creates a soil-building sequence that renews the ground faster than any store-bought amendment. 
add comfrey on the edges as a constant nutrient source and alfalfa in deeper beds, and you're essentially running a full-scale soil restoration program powered entirely by plants. This approach doesn't just make soil fertile, it restores the natural balance of biology and structure. Earthworms return, fungal networks rebuild, and the soil becomes a living ecosystem again. That's the foundation every gardener needs for consistent harvests without being dependent on synthetic fertilizers. Reviving dead soil is not about quick fixes or chemical shortcuts, it's about working with nature's own repair team, plants that specialize in healing the ground. Daikon radish drills deep and opens airways, clover rebuilds nitrogen, alfalfa mines minerals, comfrey produces living compost, buckwheat restores.